Hey y'all, hey. So, welcome to episode 16 of Motivation With Me. So, the video I have been waiting for, like, oh my God, this video was supposed to come out in 2020, like so long ago. But we here now, okay? We here for episode 16, and y'all know I'm about to get into it. And this one is about couple celibacy or celibacy and relationships and everything of the sort. I have gotten so many questions on celibacy and relationships, couple celibacy, like from both men and women. So I definitely want to do this video. I also have the blog to go with this video that I wrote. And also, I have... Da -da -da -da, my third book, One Flesh, okay, and you can get it on my publishing website, which I will put the link in the description and across the screen. And in this book, it's a workbook. It's really funny. It's basically my blog put together in a book. Y'all really going to be like, <laughs> what is this talking about? Like, did she really just say this? And the last chapter is on couple celibacy. I also talk about masturbation because uh, we have the single saved and celibate series on my YouTube channel. So I also talk about masturbation. I talk about toxic ties and relationships. I talk about sex and celibacy. Now, here's a good part. And before I get to that, I want to show y'all my shirt that I'm wearing. Okay. It says, celibacy saved me. And shout out to Amber with Dobbins Designs. She made me my shirt as well as many other shirts. So I wanted to get that plug real quick. But the difference between then and now is I am now in a relationship. So it's now considered the taking saved and celebrated. Did I say taking? Ugh, childish. Taken, Saved, and Celibate series. I still like the Single, Saved, and Celibate series, but I had to add that little touch on it because I am in a relationship now, so a lot of things have changed as far as my life um, and my journey. So this actually came perfect because when I was originally going to do the video, I was not in a relationship. And if you read the book, it's, it pretty much talks about me being single uh, for the most part, or it's, it's dedicated more towards other couples than versus me giving my experience with it, because now I can actually give my experience and my opinion on what it's like to be celibate in a relationship. So, and my boo did not, <laughs> he didn't want to be in a YouTube video. I was going to try to convince him to do a little clip, but, and he's away, he's at work. So he wasn't able to be featured in this video, but I will post a picture of us, cause we cute. But um, so couple celibacy, let's talk about it, let's get into it. First of all, let me just say this, it's difficult. It's difficult, okay? It's hard, it's real hard. And for me, it's, I just celebrated my seven year anniversary of being celibate and it is by far the hardest thing because you, it's easy when you're single and celibate because you're not tempted. You don't really like, for me, I was focusing on other things. I was building the empire, building everything that I do. It would take all day for me to tell you, but just Google me and check my resume. Um, but I was busy building my empire, so I didn't really care like that I was selling it didn't bother me that I was celibate because I was single so I didn't have the opportunity I didn't have the means I didn't have the temptation I didn't have any of those things so it was a little bit easier for me when I was single and it's a little bit more easy for single people now when you become a couple or you get in a relationship things change and in the book I've talked about so first we're going to talk about before I tell my story we're going to talk about generally what I say about couple celibacy one of the things is you've probably already did the do. If this is you and you've already did the do, then it's even more hard because you already had that good 
sex and <laughs> this is unfiltered so if you don't want to talk about sex then you don't even need to be on my page but and make sure you subscribe like and comment on this because it's a very good topic and if you want to hear more topics about celibacy or about sex or about relationships or about pretty much anything that ever exists that I can pretty much talk about anything so make sure you comment below and let me know if this helped for my couples out there so going back you probably already did the do and if you've already had sex already you already know how it is to be physically intimate with your partner hope i'm a hope i'm gonna assume that it's good we're gonna assume that you you know it's good so it's hard to refrain from something you already had right and like for me i like coffee and i don't like tea so it's like super hard for me to refrain from coffee it's 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 hard for me to refrain from something that I've already had versus something that I have not had. So that's a, already a difficult step. Now, is it possible to still be celibate? Yes, it's still possible. It's it's never not possible if you put your mind to it and if you stay dedicated to it. And both of you have an agreement. But if you've already had sex, it's a little bit more difficult. And let's also remember that couple celibacy is a mutual agreement, okay? This is something that you both have to agree on and that you both have to commit to. This is not, okay, the girl telling the guy, oh, we're going to be celibate. And this is not the guy telling the girl, oh, we're going to be celibate. And then they just supposed to go with it. No, it's a mutual agreement. It's something that you have to come to as a couple, if you went into the relationship having sex, me, that didn't happen like it didn't happen like that. But I'm gonna get on, I'm gonna get to that part. So make sure it's a mutual agreement. Make sure that you're not one person is not making this the, the sorry, the decision for everybody. Okay, for both of y'all. That's not okay. It has to be a mutual agreement. Um, also, cohabitation. Let me, and as I say in the book, let me just get a dresser drawer. Because that's how it starts. It starts, you bringing your toothbrush over there. Then next thing you know, you got a whole drawer in the dresser. And then you next thing you know, you wash your clothes. You doing, Trust me, I know. Been there, done that. Low-key, still kind of doing it. Um, but you cohabitation makes it even more difficult because you're with this person all the time. And you're with them at nighttime. So cohabitation on top of the fact that you may have already had sex makes it even more difficult. Because it's tempting. Like, we're human beings. I'm a human being. I have hormones. So don't think, and if you <laughs> go back and watch my masturbation video or my sex and celibacy video, like, don't think just because I'm celibate, I'm not human. Okay? I still get horny. Like, I'm still a woman. So when you do cohabitation, it's harder to refrain from that because I'm laying with you every night. And then a kiss might turn into foreplay might turn into oral sex might turn into so many things and then next thing you know we have the sex like it's right there like it's easily accessible so that's another thing that's hard and it's something i don't recommend is do not cohabitate if you're gonna go through this journey yes it's okay to spend a night at each other's house once and every now and then but when you start to cohabitate and you move into one space it becomes a lot harder so now again you can't refrain from this and for my beginners, it's especially hard because you're in your beginning stages. For me, I'm seven years in the game. So my willpower is amazing. <laughs> like, I, it's a no for me. Like, it, I'm seven years, I'm not throwing seven years away. It's no way. But that first year or two, baby, listen. The struggle was real. <laughs> like, that's all I can tell y'all. The struggle was so real. I cannot be nowhere near the male species. I couldn't do it. And I come from a promiscuous lifestyle. So I had a lot of sex in my past. Every, if you know me, you know I tell my story. I was promiscuous. So all I did was have sex. Like, it was hard. It was hard. But when, I, when you make that commitment to God and to yourself and you really serious about it, you can, you, it's easy. Like, you can... Nothing else matters except that commitment. You just have to be strong enough to stay committed to it. And you have to pray and ask God to keep you with this vow and with this commitment. So be careful with cohabitation. Like be, and yes, I am flipping through this book. Don't y'all judge me. 
Um, be careful with cohabitation. Seriously, like that's a big thing. Cohabitation and if you've already had sex, those are two obstacles. I definitely threw a three, but it's cool. Um, another thing, people, listen, pay attention to me, okay? Hear me clearly when I say this, and I have my camera closer now. I don't know why I was so far before, and I fixed my brightness. First of all, I'm loving this, but if anybody want to, you know, sponsor a ring light and a new camera, feel free. I love y'all for that, but listen to me clearly when I say this, okay? I'm going to get real close. Engagement is not marriage, okay? Celibacy is to refrain from sex until you are married. I don't know how many times I've had to tell my friends and my people this. Like, people literally think just because I'm in a relationship, I'm having sex. No, that's not how this works. Like, I'm not having sex just because I'm in a relationship. No. And if we get engaged, I'm still not having sex. Like, engagement is not marriage. So you can't say, oh, well, we engaged. We're about to get married anyway, so we might as well do it. That's not how that works because, you know, and I hope this never happens, but what if you don't get married? Like, what if that engagement ends up being broken off? Like, you never know what's going to happen, and then now you've broken your vow, your, your celibacy vow, and then... <laughs> what now? Like you got to start over. So engagement is not marriage. Don't let people tell you that. And don't let people assume like if you're going to do it, be fully committed to it. Be fully committed to it. Don't. We're not doing that. No. So also now I always say abstinence is not celibacy. OK, let me make that very clear. Abstinence is not celibacy. OK, celibacy is an actual vow that you take, like literally a vow for religious purposes, but abstinence is abstaining from sex for a period of time. Okay, those are two different things. And couples can practice abstinence because they, even especially if they've already done it, then like, you know, I have a few, like a lot of people who've come to me, most people that come to me about this have already had sex. And they're like, hey, Miranda, you know, me and my boyfriend or, or me and my girlfriend, we just want to, you know, we want to be abstinent. And we want to practice abstinence, whether it's for a year, whether it's until they get married, whether it's until they engage. Like, it's, it's a period of time that you're abstaining from sex. So you can practice abstinence and you can practice celibacy, which means it's a vow you make until you're married. They're two different things. They, they are similar. Don't get me wrong. They are similar, but they're two different things, okay? Because you can be abstinent for, like I said, a, a certain amount of time. It doesn't have to be until you're married. It doesn't, and then it doesn't even have to be for religious purposes. It could be for multiple purposes. Maybe you want to get closer to your significant other uh, on another mental, on a mental intimacy level, on a spiritual level. Like maybe you just want to be close to them. So you're taking out that physical intimacy aspect and that feature because you want to try something else. You want to get to know your partner in different ways. And that is actually a good way to do it is to take out sex because now you're forced to get in tune with each other and connect in a different way. And abstinence is similar to a fast. You can think about it like that as well. I always say celibacy, abstinence, is just celibacy is just a real long fast. Abstinence is a fast. You're fasting from something. And we all know what happens when you fast. A lot of things, blessings, miracles. You hear God more clearly. God hear God hears you more clearly. You focus on things. You see things that you did not see before. You're taking away something that you value, something that you love. Like whether it's intermittent, whether it's intermittent. I I don't know if I said it right. But y'all yeah, get the point. Whether it's food, whether it's sundown to sun up, whether it's social media, whether it's uh, secular music, whether it's sex, with like you can fast from pretty much anything, but make sure that it's a sacrifice. I fast from social media all the time, but at this point it's not really a fast anymore because I'm not suffering because I don't particularly like social media. Like I'm not a big fan of it. So I take breaks from it, but I decided it, it, I'm not fasting from it because I'm not sacrificing anything. A sacrifice for me to be fasting from caffeine or eating at certain periods of time because I am making this video at 11.59 at night, so I tend to eat really late at night. Um, and I'm addicted to coffee. Matter of fact, hold it up.
Mm-hmm. I did it. And people were like, how you drink coffee so late? Like, who does that? You can't go to sleep? At this point, I'm, I'm so addicted to caffeine. Y'all literally will drink this coffee and go right to bed. So abstaining from sex is literally like a fast. If you want to do that, that's your decision. Anything that you do in your relationship is your decision, period. So, you know, and I don't like, I, I, I don't like making my videos long, but when I touch on a good topic, it's really hard to give a lot of information and I don't like rushing it. But at the same time, I like to keep it short because people got short attention spans. And I'm really about to get to a point where I'm like, whatever, I don't care. Either you're going to watch it or you're not. But so going into my experience with my boyfriend. Now, let's go back. What year we in, y'all? <laughs> 2021 oh my god the pandemic uh so october 2019 to about january 2020 i was in another relationship with somebody else and this person actually did agree to be celibate like he knew what he was going into first of all anybody i talk to know what they're going into Period. You know what you're going into. That's also in the book, When to Tell Somebody That You're Celibate. Like, y'all got to order this book. <laughs> like, you just really have to order the book. It's sold out right now because it literally sells, like, super quick. But go to my website and order it because I have a new shipment coming in. So go ahead and get your copy now before I get them and they sell out again. So I had a boyfriend, and he was okay with my journey. He was a very spiritual person. Um, he had no issues with it. And I was dating at the time a few people. And what I did was I asked them all the same question, like what they thought about celibacy. Do they think they can do it? You know, kind of just throwing a little bit of question out there to see who's going to answer a certain way. And oh, my forehead is shiny. See, attention span. Um, and he actually had a really good answer. Like he wanted to try it. It was something that he wanted to do. He was strong in his spirituality. Notice I said spirituality and I didn't say religion, but he was strong in that. So he wanted to try it. Like that's something he really wanted to do. So it worked out for us. It did. Now, unfortunately we did break up. It didn't have anything to do with celibacy. We just parted ways. Um, and that was like in my celibacy journey, I'd say it's about four people that were OK with it. We weren't in relationships. We were da we were dating, but they were interested in it. Like it was something that they really, truly thought or knew that they could do. Most dudes. Nah, <laughs> they was like, I don't think I'm bad to do it. Like or you get the ones that can that convince you like, oh, you just ain't had the right one yet. Like it's a bunch of nonsense like you. I need to write a whole book on that, like the type of responses I've gotten. But we broke up, and now I'm in a new relationship that started July 2020. So it's been about seven months, seven-ish. What's today? Everybody 18? Yeah. So about seven months, we've been in a relationship. And when we first started dating, or when we first, you know, were getting together, I made sure to have, I had that conversation with him. And... <clears throat> gratefully um he was kind of already abstinent he had already went a long period of time without having sex and he is one that's not he's bigger on mental intimacy and connection and energy than he is on physical intimacy so you know that worked out in my favor because i used to always pray you know god send me the man for me and it's hard dating when you're celibate because i mean who is it's, it's a very few amount of men that's gonna deal with that so i never asked for any specific qualities i just said send the man that you want that i'm that's meant to be for me and you know he came into my life and we had the conversation and i said hey you know if if we're gonna be together you do know that you're gonna have to be celibate like we're not gonna be able to have sex like are you willing to make that commitment you have to like really sit down and talk about it and ask them you have to ask them because ask them early because if they're not going to be able to do it there's no point in even going on with the relationship like it's just a waste of time so you have to have that conversation early and again we're going into this not having sex because i've been celibate seven years and so you know we had the conversation and he was like 
he thought about it. He was like, I thought about it, but I haven't really thought about it. Like, it's not really been on my mind. And he was like, give me, he basically told me to give me a, give me a couple days to think about it. <laughs> and my friend was like, girl, he going to be celibate. <laughs> like, he really like you. So don't worry about it. He going to do it. Because the way we connected, I got to do a whole other video on that. Like, y'all, we're going to do it. I'm going to wait till he get back so we can do that one together. But he literally took not even a whole day. And he was like, I'm committing to it. I don't want to lose you. I want to be with you. So I am going to commit to being celibate. Now, we prefer, he, he prefers, and I agree to call it absent. Uh, because he didn't go through the whole process like I did. You know, I went through church and all that. But I did get him a ring and everything. So he decided, he was like, if this is if this is what I got to do to keep you and to have a future with you, then this is what I'm going to do. And it was quick. And I said, you know, I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> like, are you sure? I said, because once you make this decision, you can't go back. Like, we when we start this relationship and you make this commitment, you have to be sure. Because, yes, we can end the relationship if you decide later you don't want to do it. But then now our feelings are involved. And now, you know, love is involved. And so many things are involved. So it's going to become harder on both of us. It's going to hurt. So are you sure that this is something that you can do? And he was like, yeah. Like, I'm doing it. Period. And here we are seven months later. And it has not been any type of hassle. Like, he doesn't pressure me into doing anything he doesn't, he is just as dedicated to it as I am. And we're closer on a mental level. Like his love language is quality, time, and affection. Mine is not. So I'm more of an acts of service person. And with his love language even being quality, time, and affection, he's still able to refrain from sex and from sexual activity with me because we both made that decision together yes i was already celibate but it was still a mutual agreement like hey we're gonna do this and we understand that we can't this is until marriage this is not until we get engaged this is not until we reach a, a certain uh, a year or a certain milestone of our relationship this is until we get married um and so we both agree to that we both understand that and there are no issues when it comes to sex and, you know, yeah, sometimes I think, well, he made a sacrifice for me and blah, blah, blah. And he not only did it for me, but he did it for himself. And I really, like, I strongly, strongly appreciate that. Because, again, it's hard to find somebody that's going to accept this part of you and, and join this journey with you and be on this journey with you. That is something that's really big to me and near and dear to my heart. Because I knew, being single for six years, I knew that the person that I was going to be with and the person that I was going to have a future with had to be able to join this journey with me. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I am grateful for that. And I thank him for that. And on my Facebook, because my anniversary just passed, my celibacy anniversary was February 8th. So on my, on my anniversary, I made a post to him on his Facebook. And I told him, I said, this is a celebration for you too. Like, I have to acknowledge you because you're doing this with me now at this point. You know, like now you have your day. Like now you have your celebration and your, I call it a celebursary. Uh, <laughs> I, I was like, it's my celebursary, y'all. So now, you know, I had to acknowledge him because he's a part of this journey too. And um, we're doing this together. And it means a lot to me. So that's my experience with couple celibacy because I want to let you guys know it's not impossible. I used to think sometimes like, this is impossible. I'm never going to be in a relationship because of the celibacy thing. Like I would call my cousin like, I can't do this no more. Like I've been single so long, this celibacy holding me back. Like she was like, that's okay because God is going to send a person for you. Like you're going to win at the end. And it's going to it's going to work out so much better. Your love is going to be stronger. Your connection is going to be stronger. Everything is going to be stronger before you bring that physical aspect in. And I'm glad I'm I glad I'm glad I listened. And I just, you know, I had my moments. But at the end of the day, I kept the faith because I knew that eventually God had our he planned it out already. So it's not impossible. 
And I'm a, a testimony for that. Now, let's hope I don't come to y'all a little later like, mm, that didn't work. Positive manifestation only. <laughs> But it's possible. I don't want you guys to think it's impossible. It can be done. And when it's done, it is beautiful. It is a really great connection. Again, if you're already in a relationship and you already had sex and you decide you want to be abstinent or you want to start the celibate journey, it's possible. It is possible. And this is my encouragement to you. If I can do it, you can do it. It's It's been done. I'm not the only person. There's tons of people out there who are abstinent, who are celibate. Y'all know the story of Devon Franklin and Megan Good. Like, I follow uh, celibate people on Instagram. You may see, like, abstinence videos that I post. Or, like, this is, it's a community. Like, I'm not the only person doing this. We're not the only people doing this. So, if if you really want to, and if you guys really decide that, hey, this is what we're going to do, we're going to make our connection stronger, we're going to take out that physical intimacy aspect so that we can get to know each other better, so that we can create a greater connection and a stronger energy. So it's possible. That's that's what my message today is, is I'm giving you my testimony. I'm giving you the, fruit, the few rules that I did give you, um, like engagement is not marriage, be careful with cohabitation um, and be careful if you've already had sex. That can kind of make it a little bit more complicated. But I am telling you also, it is possible. OK, and if you are still single and celibate, I want to also give you encouragement. Don't think that you're not going to find anybody just because you're celibate. Don't have that mindset, because at the end of the day, you are saving yourself for someone special. Your body is a temple. And when that someone special comes along, they're going to appreciate it. You're going to appreciate it. The love is going to be stronger. So don't don't let that get to you. Don't don't let that singleness get to you. Don't let that. I've been single and celibate for so long. Like, am I ever going to find somebody? Don't let that get to you. You can have your moments, but don't let that get to you. Don't fold. Uh, Don't give in. Don't. Oh, I can't do this out or maybe get in a relationship and you decide, oh, I really love this person. Like, I know I've been celibate, but I really, 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 really love this person. OK, I know we're going to get married. I know we're going to get married. And then you end up having sex. So because these types of things happen and if it does start over, I tell people that all the time. It's in my blogs. If you, you know, backslide, you have sex, start over. If that's what you want to do, start over. It's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> like you are in control of your own life. This is your journey. Nobody can tell you how to do your journey. So that's perfectly fine. But it's possible in a relationship. Like it, I'm doing it now. I know other people that are doing it. I know people who have done it, who are now married. Like it's possible. Okay, guys. So I wanted to briefly give y'all my uh, opinion and my aspect on couple celibacy again make sure y'all get that one list though go on cop that uh because it goes more into detail on not only couple celibacy but celibacy in general and like i said i really been wanting to do this video for the longest uh i wrote the blog a long time ago and i'm going to continue to do celibacy videos and sex videos like i said if you have any type of Anything you want to see, any type of comment, any type of question, like, please let me know. Because at the end of the day, my YouTube content is directed towards my audience. So it's what you want to hear. And again, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. The next episode, I'm not going to lie, I don't have a topic for it yet. I ain't got it. So that's why I need y'all to come up with a topic for me. Usually I can come up with a topic on my own or I'll pull some out the bag, ask Christian or ask my cousin, like, hey, what should I talk about on my YouTube channel now? But that's why I said, if you have an idea, something that you need me to talk about, then please let me know. I have relationship videos. I have communication videos. I can do friendship videos, family video. Like, I can do mental health videos. I can do pretty much anything. So give me some topics, y'all. Throw some stuff my way. And make sure, again, you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm not going to tell you no more. Like, you watching this video, just hit the subscribe button. Like, what you doing? It's, it's going to take two seconds. Just go on, hit that button. Go on, hit that like button. Go on, comment. Even if it's a heart or emoji or something, like, let me know what's up. 
And that is my little spiel on couple celibacy. And I'm excited because it's working out for me and I hope it work out for you. And again, this is episode 16 of Motivation with me.